Hello friend, welcome back. As we near the end of 2023, I really wanted to make a video just kind of talking you guys through 10 best pieces of gear that have added immense value to projects that I've been working on. These aren't things that necessarily came out this year or that I purchased this year, but just things that I found again and again to be really useful and practical. Some of these items are incredibly inexpensive and others are going to be a little bit more expensive, but the hope was to keep all of them within the realistic category. Nothing crazy expensive, just things that I think the everyday kind of working filmmaker can find value from. First item is going to be these in-ear headphones from MEE Audio. These are the M6 Pro in-ear monitors, and these actually come from my music background. I've recommended these to so many friends, but they're around 50 bucks, and I literally purchased this exact pair back in 2015, and they have continued to hold up over the years. They are really similar to the Shure SE215s, I believe, which are around $100, and those are kind of usually the standard and kind of budget in-ear headphones for musicians, but these are half the price, and a lot of people say that they are better, if not the same, as those headphones. So just kind of wanted to share these right off the bat. Strong recommendation if you guys do not have a solid pair of headphones, but you don't need to spend a lot. So 50 bucks since 2015 has been incredible for me. They live in my backpack and they are my go-to when editing. Next up is going to be the FS60B. This is an incredibly compact 60 watt bicolor light. I got tons of use out of this light over the past year. It replaced my Godox SL60W and I have not looked back with how tiny this thing is. I think one of my favorite things about the FS line from Nanlite is just how budget friendly they truly are and how they compete with a lot of the more expensive stuff from Aperture and Amaran. So I can kind of show you guys comparing a three light kit, but essentially you can save like a thousand dollars choosing to go with nan light i think they're one of the most budget friendly companies making lights out there that are still really quality again if you go to amazon you're going to find like tons of manufacturers of different lights but i just cannot speak to the quality and for me it's really important just to be in one ecosystem so everything can be controlled with the same app and nan light has been that for me so i just wanted to give a strong recommendation to the fs line and specifically the fs 60b as it's been incredibly helpful to me I think one of my favorite features also is just an incredibly simple power cable. So there is no large power box on any of these lights. You simply plug in the cable and you are good to go. I think for the style of shooting that I'm doing, oftentimes working as a one man band, time is money. And so these lights set up so quick, there is no you know multiple cables with a large power box and they can simply just be controlled with the app on my phone. So really loved these lights this past year. The next one is a little bit of a DIY, but they're specifically these strong magnets that I added to my Pavo tubes. And so Pavo tubes usually come with these plastic clips. And I think they actually make magnetic ones as well, but I opted for just using the included clips and adding these magnets. They're incredibly strong. These have really made these tube lights incredibly more versatile for me. The fact that they're battery powered and now I can just stick them anywhere, use these on a ton of shoots. What I really love about this design is you can have the magnet attached to the plastic clip and there is still room to screw in the quarter 20 spigot. And so if you are wanting to throw this on a light stand, you do not have to take off the magnet, which has been incredible to me, saves a ton of time. One note, when you buy these magnets, the screws are a little bit long. And so I actually did have to trim them down a little bit with a Dremel, or you guys could use some type of cutting tool, but this allows them to sit flush against the plastic clip and they have just lived on there since I got them. Next up is going to be the small rig free blazer tripod. I did a review on this earlier in the year, but incredibly versatile tripod, very quick to set up, which is kind of the one latch system for the legs. It's not perfect, but I think for the price point of where this is sitting in the market, it's incredible, can strongly recommend it. Haven't had any issues with it breaking. It's really held up as I've used it on different productions. The one from Sure looks awesome. I've kind of heard mixed things about the spreader breaking, and I think there was one other brand of tripod that was also very similar. So intrigued by those, but I think for the price of where this is sitting again, Really strong recommendation. I've continued to love it and it's gonna stay in my kit, I think, for a while. Next up is going to be these wheels from Newer for my C-Stands. I originally bought these for a specific project where I was gonna be needing to roll around a few stands just to help save some time as we were filming in an office, but I've been surprised. I have kept these wheels on my C-Stands since then. I didn't realize how nice this would be, especially when you have heavier fixtures on them. Moving them around is incredibly easy, and I think for the price point of around 45 
25 bucks. I've really loved my investment in these and can definitely recommend them to any of you guys. Number six on my list is not going to be a surprise to a lot of you guys, and it is the Fujifilm X-H2S. This has been my primary A-cam this entire year. Did a full review on it. I've showed you guys tons of projects that I have shot with it, but again, I've just really loved this camera and all the scenarios that I have put it through. Very few cons, very few reasons where I would look to sell this camera. So just wanted to put it here on my list. It's gonna continue to be in my kit for a while. I don't have any active plans of selling, but if you guys are still on the fence about this camera, just know it is gonna continue to hold up. I think for years to come, the dynamic range is incredible. I think all the features that Fuji really packed into this mirrorless style body is incredible and would highly recommend it. Next up might be a little bit out of left field, but it's going to be these tool bags from Harbor Freight. Specifically, I'm looking at these 15 inch models. I think I picked them up for around seven or eight dollars. And in my kind of production workflow, these have completely replaced the plastic milk crates that I was using in the past. So I've seen a lot of filmmakers using the plastic milk crates and I think they're super handy for more of a crew scenario or if you have a large car to put them on or a van to store them in. But I have actually swapped everything over to these bags. I realized that I could pretty much fit everything that I was fitting in one of the one by one plastic crates into these bags. And the biggest added bit of versatility has been the ability to actually use these as sandbags when they are completely full. So if I just need a few extension cords and there's still gonna be a few cords sitting in one of the bags, I could simply throw this on one of my light stands and it doubles as a sandbag. Same is gonna be for a lot of my grip equipment. I'm not using a lot of this all the time. And so the ability to kind of double these as a sandbag has been really valuable, really versatile, and just saves me space, not only packing it into my car, but when loading it onto my cart. And I have really loved switching over to these. Next up is going to be the Sniper Series lenses from Suray. I literally just did a review, so I'm not gonna speak too much to it here, but in general, great autofocus, really fun character, and they are incredibly compact, and there's not much more that I could ask for in a set of lenses. They're super fun. I'm gonna be using them over this next year for sure. And one person did know there does seem to be some issue right now with the way the IBIS performs with Fujifilm cameras as if it's non-existent. And I did talk to Suray, they are working on a firmware update. And so just know that if you guys are looking into these for Fujifilm cameras, they are currently sorting through that issue. Number nine is going to be a sling bag. I'm not gonna give a recommendation to a specific one because I have this one that I just found at a thrift store for around $10, but this has been kind of essential to me on any shoot that I've been doing. The ability to just kind of keep essentials close by has been invaluable. Batteries, multi-tools, Allen keys, you know, lens wipes, lens cloths, like so many different things I keep in a bag like this on a shoot day. And I know I'm not the only one. These definitely are growing in popularity among people shooting videos, but I just wanted to throw mine in the mix here. I really loved it. You don't need to go buy a fancy one. I literally found this one at a thrift store and it has held up super well for me. So can't give a recommendation enough for picking up some type of sling bag if you don't have one. Number 10 on my list is going to be the Shimoda Explore V2 backpack. And guys, this has been a complete game changer for the travel jobs that I've done over the last year. Prior, I would travel with a lot of my gear in a Pelican style case that would be used as a carry-on, but an issue that I've run into several times that I'm sure you guys have as well is often, you know, you are about to board the plane and they decide to gate check all roller bags. And I literally had two scenarios where I've had to fight flight attendants, you know, at the gate telling them this bag cannot get checked. It has expensive gear that I don't want broken. And it's literally been kind of a whole ordeal at the gate. Thankfully, both times I was able to still get it on, but in general, I wanted to move away of that even being a possibility. So getting this backpack has enabled me to fit all my essentials into it when traveling, including you know multiple cameras, lenses. You can literally fit so much in these backpacks. This isn't gonna be a review of them. Maybe I'll do one at some point, but I think if you are looking for a backpack for travel to store your gear, you can really fit a lot. Can't say enough about the Shimoda series and really look forward to using it for years to come. 
before we end this video, I just kind of wanted to give one honorable mention, and that is going to be ND filters. I've been asked so many times about what ND filter I currently use, and the truth is I don't have one that I am confident enough to recommend yet. I'm still testing, trying to find something that works well for my workflow and also preserves the image quality coming out of Fuji cameras. I did want to mention this new product from Freewell. They recently sent it over to me and I don't have to make a video about it, but I just wanted to share with you guys. I'm currently testing it out. It's kind of this magnetic fixed ND system. So I think there's three different NDs in there at three different strengths and they just pop on the front of your lens with a magnet. Also includes a polarizer and a UV filter. Curious just what the fixed ND style will be like for me. I've previously also tested out the Nisi Swift VND. That's kind of my current go-to, although I don't love everything about it. So just wanted to mention, if you guys are looking into ND filters, I don't really know yet. I'm gonna continue to keep you guys updated if I find a system that I really love. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you found one of the pieces of gear in here helpful. The point is not to make a video to convince you guys to go buy a bunch of more things that you don't need, but rather share some useful things, some products that I am confident in, in case any of these things would be helpful to you, your workflow. I'd love to hear down below any pieces of gear that you've used this last year that you feel like were really worth the money or especially ones that were really budget friendly or in the lane of kind of like hacks or DIY. I'm always interested in just how people are getting creative utilizing gear at cheaper price points. So let me know down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.